multiply some rational expressions, which remember is just like multiplying fractions. So please remember, I'm going to erase this here in a minute, but I just want to remind you that when you multiply the fractions 2 thirds times 6 sevenths, um, we have two approaches to that. Um, I prefer the removing the common factor approach, but many people don't do that. They just multiply straight across and they call this 12 over 21 and they say, oh, wait a minute, there's a factor of 3 that goes into each of those numbers. And so then they say 3 goes into here 4 times and 3 goes into here 7 times and I have an answer of 4 over 7. Well, it's my preference that you catch those common factors beforehand rather than having to reduce a, a large fraction. I prefer you to get those factors out of um, uh, the common, um, these common factors out here. So I prefer you to get the 3 out and the 3 out there and see that your answer is 4 over 7. So if you do that concept right here, then when you work with um, algebraic fractions, what you have to do is you have to factor everything. So that's not factorable unless I called it 2 times 5 times t, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to take the greatest common factor out of this expression, and so I'm going to need a t minus 2 as a binomial. Please don't take a 2 out of this or a 3 out of this. You've got to take a 6 out of it. It's got to be the greatest common factor. And likewise here, you've got to take a 20 out, not a 2, not a 10. You have to take a 20 out, and then you'll have t minus 2. Sure, I could write that as 5 times 6 or 5 times 2 times 3 and t times t times t, and I actually might even do that in a minute. But right now, I'd just like you to see that this binomial, t minus 2, is equal to 1. And it, they can both be removed, one on top and one on the bottom. If you would like to then, maybe reduce the 20 over the 30 and say 10 goes into each of those. And so 10 goes into here twice and 10 goes into there three times. That would be an option. Uh, you could reduce the 2's right here, but let's say I didn't notice it. Let's pretend I didn't notice it. And I could even pretend I don't notice this t and this t cubed, but I'm going to deal with that. Um, and you don't have to think of it like this. It is just subtracting their exponents. But t cubed is t times t times t. So when I remove one of those t's on the top and on the bottom, I'm left with t squared downstairs. When you divide with monomials and the bases are alike, you subtract the exponents. So you could have taken this t to the first over t to the third and subtracted and got t to the minus 2 upstairs. That would have to be written with a positive exponent, so t to the positive 2 downstairs. So this is a way to think of it. Let's, let's continue here and let's not notice that I, I didn't um, simplify everything yet, but I still have a 10 here times a 2, which is a 20, and a 3 times a 6 which is an 18, and then I have the t squared right there, and I go, oops, I forgot to get the even number 2 out of those, and so I'll say, okay, 2 goes into here 10 times, and into here 9 times, and finally I've reduced this expression to 10 over 9 t squared. Again, you're just reducing a fraction. All right, um, let's do another uh, that has quite a bit of factoring involved. Again, this is called multiplying, but we hardly do any multiplying. What we do is factor and factor and factor. One of our favorite, most favorite skills, right? Factoring. Um, let's take this problem. And we're multiplying again. So again, factor everything. So is there a greatest common factor? Looks like there's a two. So I'll take that out first, and when I get that out, this is the difference of squares right there. So I'm going to have to factor that again in a minute. I'll probably end up writing it down here. So let's go down here and get the 4 out of that. So i got to get the 4 out of that expression, and oh, son of a gun, that's the difference of squares too. Let's finish this first fraction, and let's write the results down here. So I have that common factor of 2, and then t squared minus 49 factors into t plus 7 and t minus 7. And then downstairs, this 4, and t squared minus 1 factors into t plus 1 and t minus 1. Now let's go over to the other fraction. Is there a greatest common factor? Yeah. And that's all there is, though. So I'm just going to factor the 8 out and then write the binomial that follows, the t plus 1. And believe it or not, 16 goes into 112 7 times. Pretty sure. 
And so the common factor there is 16. And then the binomial that will result is 2 minus 7. And now I'm ready. I've got this all factored. I'm ready to remove common factors. The one thing I failed to share with you right along is that when you remove a common factor, like when you take this t minus 7 over that t minus 7, I have said, remember, it's equal to 1. Because just in case everything disappears, you should be prepared to leave a 1 in the numerator, because I believe everything's going to disappear on this one. I may be wrong. Oh, I am wrong. Oh, well. Um, this t plus 1, and t plus 1 is equal to 1, but I, I have not been tending to write that. Um, I think I'm all set there. What I should do is reduce these factors, and they're, you know, pretty easy to go ahead and grab that versus doing a 2 here and a 2 there. It's much easier to say 8 goes into here once and into here twice. Much easier to say 2 goes into here once and into here twice. And finally, all I have left in the numerator besides all those 1s is the t plus 7. And 1 times t plus 7 is just that t plus 7. And down here, 2 times 2 is 4, and then this binomial, t minus 1, and I'm all done. I'm all set. You know, again, it's called multiplying, but it's, it's factor, and it's remove common factors is what it is. Uh, let's go ahead now and um, take a look at one more problem. That, again, the topic is multiplying rational expressions. Okay, um, factor everything. I've got a trinomial in the first numerator. Um, this is a problem where each problem is, each piece is going to factor quickly the first time. So I'm looking for two numbers right here whose product is a positive 9 because there's just a 1 in front of that y squared term. So what two numbers multiply to be a positive 9, yet they have to add to be a negative number. So boy, those both better be negative values. I bet, the, I bet they need to be a minus 9 and a minus 1. And then down here, I have the difference of squares. And so this factors into y plus 1 and y minus 1. And over here, I can't do anything with that. It's a binomial. It's 1 times y plus 4, or just y plus 4. And then finally, this denominator, I'm looking for two numbers whose product is a negative 36. Boy, they better be opposite in sign. And, boy, I bet it's going to be 9 times 4 is 36. But I need the 9 and the 4 to add to be a negative 5. So I better make the 9 the negative number and the 4 the positive number so that they add to be that negative 5. And everything's factored. I'm ready to now remove my common factors. This is the problem where everything disappears. So I just need to remind you that y plus 4 over y plus 4 is equal to 1 y minus 9 over y minus 9. One's on the top, one's on the bottom. It doesn't matter if they're kitty corner or just right directly on top of one another. That's equal to 1. And then this y minus 1 over this y minus 1, that is a, a, we're reducing, removing a factor of 1. And so what's left in this problem in the numerator is the number 1. And in the denominator, we just have this binomial left, y plus 1. Boy, remember, this one, this one has a restriction, you can't use a negative 1 for that. Right here, for this binomial, you can't use a positive 1. For this one, you cannot use a negative 4. And right here, again, these are my restrictions on my domain. I cannot use a 9. You have to you have to list your restrictions based on your original problem, not on your final answer, where that says that only a negative 1 is your restriction. This was the original problem. Um, it was the, uh, if it was a science-related problem, that's the original situation, that's the scenario. So I have to be sure to list all of those restrictions. We're going to pause now. The next clip's just going to have one problem that's more related to an intermediate algebra class and multiplying rational expressions.